Good morning. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm losing my voice. I, my cackle is not usually so not benign sounding. Um, good morning. I'm Liz Whitlock. This is Viv Tofik. We are the co-presidents of the Early Stage Anesthesiology Scholars, and um, we're sort of the de facto coordination help for this program along with Mike Mathis and Julie Freed who are the ESAS events coordinators and have put an enormous amount of work into determining the programming today which we hope will be exciting, invigorating and, and targeted towards people who find themselves at the beginning or beginning-ish of an academic anesthesiology career. Um, we hope to stimulate conversations and connections among the people that are here. Uh, we also hope to, um, with this little talk, introduce a little bit of the motivations behind the formation of ESAS and the Scholars Program uh, to give you some context about why we and, and others think that this is a really important initiative for the future of anesthesiology. Uh, so there was a, a fair amount of concern um, over the last decade, really, about the future of academic anesthesiology and, and where we were going as a specialty is, as clinical demands started to sort of eclipse our ability to um, maintain a scientific focus and maintain introspection about the work that we do. Um, and much of this was also focused on the fact that there were early career, unfortunately, failure to launch, if you will, um, that the transition between enthusiastic but junior um, to our one funded investigator was, was unfortunately a real challenge. Um, and that people didn't feel that they had guidance, they were doing this alone, and unfortunately, in, in a sad proportion of the time, unsuccessfully. Um, and so we uh, were invited by George Mashour and Michael Avedon to, um, a, a, among others, leaders in the specialty, to um, generate a group to support um, knowledge sharing, collaboration, and ultimately, um, in the hopes of improving the success of junior investigators in anesthesiology who are excited to, to continue to com contribute to the knowledge generation um, of what we do. So the uh, so ESAS, Early Stage Anesthesiology Scholars, was, was formed to improve that community and facilitate collaboration both among the members and at the more senior levels of anesthesiology and science, um, and to develop and implement strategies to enhance retention of uh, motivated and excited scholars. Um, we mod modeled our uh, leadership structure after the American Physician Scientists Association, which is a, again, successful organization of uh, physician scientists uh, in their training and at junior levels. Um, so led by trainees, but uh, with the guidance of more senior members of the specialty. Um, our inaugural scholars program was in 2016 at the IRS AUA combined meeting. Um, and it was the first time really that these meetings had programming directed specifically at trainees. Um, and based on the feedback we received from that program, it was clear that this filled a previously unmet need. Subsequently went on to have a scholars program at IRS 2017, and here we are at the third year of scholars programming. Uh, so I'm Vivian Tofik, as Liz said. Um, so what exactly is, is ESAS, or Early Stage Anesthesiology Scholars? It's kind of whatever we want it to be. I think that's sort of how we formed it. Um, the goals, as Liz said, were really to provide a, a, or to fill an unmet need for junior faculty, fellows, residents, down to medical students who were wanting to get into academic anesthesiology but didn't really feel like they had an avenue. They didn't know the right people. Um, so we decided we sort of form our own group of the right people, um, which is anyone who wants to be involved. Uh, and so basically, there's no dues. We have no budget. Um, we uh, have a lot of phone calls. <laughs> we, we hang out. Um, and we do things like this because of the kindness of uh, bigger associations that have budgets and, um, and have dues. Um, but basically, uh, we overlap our interests with a lot of other societies, such as FAIR, IRS, AUA, and others that have been extremely supportive supportive of our work, um, as well as, as NIH, NIGMS, um, and other uh, NIH um, institutes. Um, so we're really governed by our members and um, guided by senior advisors. 
So right now the leadership team is composed of uh, this group here. Um, we're trying to be more international, um, and so definitely we have some people from Canada, which is um, you know good too. But uh, it's where I'm from, so I have to put a shout out. But um, but we would like to get people from Europe, um, Asia, Australasia, etc. So we definitely are not trying to limit to uh, North America, and are really encouraging people from all over to be involved. Um, so we have a group of um, sort of we call the exec and then we have um, regional representatives and as I said these people are from sort of all corners of the United States but then also we have a representative um, Cinziana who's from um, from Toronto um, who's representing sort of the international group so we have people from all over and we're happy to take on uh, more people who are interested we do have an advisory council that's growing um, these are just some of the people who are involved in in advising us and providing guidance to us uh, as we come up with programs and ideas and and get more and more involved with the different societies. Um, so you'll probably recognize some of these names, but representatives from IRS, AUA, um, Education, FAIR, sort of a, a mix of people who um, have been guiding us. So we have a website um, that I built on my maternity leave last year, um, and then subsequently Doug made it so much better. Um, and so it has, um, up, it's getting updated all the time. Um, there's a lot of interesting content. Um, um, and again, if you want to generate content to put on here, we are so happy to have more people contributing. Um, so we do try to advertise the scholars program, but we also advertise opportunities for fellowships, opportunities for getting involved um, with different societies. And we've kind of become the point people for any society looking for the involvement of junior faculty and trainees. So definitely check back on our website um, frequently. And become members. That little yellow square tells you to become members. Again, there's no membership dues, so you just you know, can sign up anytime. Um, most importantly, um, we are having a meeting tonight at 6.15, so at the end of this day of um, scholars uh, um, programming, we have a meeting this evening. So if you're interested in being involved or you just kind of want to see what it's about, um, we're going to be meeting for an hour uh, in the water tower room uh, and definitely are looking for people to get involved and uh, happy to answer questions about that later. But we mostly want to launch into today's very exciting program. So we are going to hand off to yeah, okay. We're handing off to Katie Shenning. So we will do that now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here, and we hope you have a wonderful, exciting day and have the opportunity to meet a lot of uh, colleagues. Thanks very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm Katie Shenning. I'm at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, Oregon. Um, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce our first speaker today, Dr. Max Kells, uh, who is the David E. Longnecker Associate Professor of Anesthesiology and Critical Care at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Dr. Kells is an expert in the neurobiology of unconsciousness and um, is well funded by the NIH. He will be discussing how uh, early experiences have the potential to shape your careers. Um, he'll discuss how we should plan to disprove our own hypotheses, which I feel like I'm really good at already, so <laughs> I, might not play, I might not pay attention to that part. Um, and he'll finally discuss how to seek out good mentors. Um, he'll talk for about 30 minutes, and we'll leave about 10 minutes at the end for questions, so get your good questions ready. Uh, without much further ado, I'd like to welcome to the stage Dr. Max Kells. <laughs> 